Hello. I am not a zoologist or paleontologist or anything of that, but I pretend to be one on the internet. And we are today in this forest, which I don't think has an, a real name, somewhere here in Estonia. There are, the houses are right there. So we are in far from civilization. If you call this civilization, it's probably about uh, what we will do today. We uh, approach some wild animals and try to not get eaten. And before uh, this recording started, there were two crows there, which I like to call avian dinosaurs because that's what they literally are, and I want to approach them. This video is going to be a disaster. I wanted to be the next day with Attenborough, but I think this will evolve into the Filthy Frank show instead. Um, which is also good, I think. Uh, so, let's just see where it is. You know you don't have to record uh, this long walk. Ah, really? Yeah. This is pretty... You're on camera, okay. So here we see what I presume to be the, the remnants of ancient Atlantis. That's literally everything that's left of the old city. Here we see uh, the legendary grill of uh, Poseidon, which is what made the credit passes in the one famous console episode. <laughs> what is <it> funny? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what this is. Uh, my life is in China. <laughs> uh, you can see here uh, some ancient plants. I don't think it's really because these are some edible. <laughs> Why don't you try to eat it? Uh, we, 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 to I see? Think, I think we will just end up on some cringe compilation if this. Yeah. <laughs> but, but, can it be a compilation yeah, if it's, want to hear? it's all cringe? Yeah, I know. <laughs> should, should I, you want to know an old story of mine? No. Like, <laughs> on like, with like my primary school, which would be elementary school in America, and everywhere, we would always go on like trips to places like this, and I would get really fucking bored and go full caveman mode by picking up a stick like this and a stone like that. It's already pre-cut, look, and try to make my own spear. and. I never actually had the goal what to do with that spear, but it felt cool to be like a caveman. And to look like one, huh? Yeah, which I <laughs> just want to say, which explains my hairstyle, but thank you, my loving wife, <laughs> for uh, insulting me daily, <laughs> like Raspuccia in Norbit. <laughs> Well, uh, we just found this here and remember in 2016 where there were these news of like people in the forest who dress up as clowns to scare people. Maybe it's from there. Or maybe like that if I stand like this, now it's correct. <laughs> and you're not wrong. Uh, I swear I didn't put this here, I don't have uh, paint spray. Is that how you say it in English? Uh, it's spray not, paint. It's yeah. not like I speak English. <laughs> spray paint it is. Yeah. It's not like you speak English either. Alright. <laughs> I speak Chicano. <laughs> Chick. <laughs> you speak Chicky. And we now go deeper into the forest. Now I'm again. Uh, uh, I, off camera, I talked with this about our camera woman Miranda. <laughs> uh, this all feels like the start of the Blair Witch Project or any other of those shitty found footage movies. I don't like those movies that much anymore. Like the only one I really liked was Cloverfield, but that one was ruined by J.J. Abrams with these shitty sequels. And the thing is about J.J. Abrams, he ruins a lot of things actually. Like what has he not ruined? He has ruined Lost, the ending, with shitty writing style. He, I think he lo destroyed uh, Star Trek, the, the new movie trilogy. Although I only watched the first movie, I only heard that he destroyed it. But he definitely, definitely destroyed Star Wars with Episode 9. Uh, I really liked Episode 8. 7 was okay, but fucking 9, like it, it just... 
I'm just rambling in the forest. What the fuck? <laughs> I mean, you just change the location for what you usually do. Yes. Oh, wait, look, look. Fern. I know it's not uh, fascinating, but fern is one of the oldest plant types that Earth has. I mean, I think look that makes this. it actually fascinating, what? not? Yes, Doesn't that make it fascinating? Yes, look, see. Most plants we know today reproduce through seeds, but but uh, ferns are so primitive they reproduce through spores. These here are spores, as you can see, and which makes them very similar to fungi, actually. And there is like one very bizarre hypothesis by a man named uh, Mark McManamin. He's a geologist and paleontologist, and he thinks that land plants as we know them. Uh, were created through a fusion of uh, fungus, gamete, and uh, Animals. algae gamete, yeah. which is, would be very unusual, and I don't think that's actually supported by science. But it's fascinating to think about how shit like that happens. Shit, now that you get demonetized because of curse. <laughs> so that you're monetized yet? <laughs> <laughs> I will one day in the distant future. <laughs> okay, I'm filming it. Should I film you? No, no. Here we see a golden beetle. I don't know if that's the name, but it is certainly golden. It's green though. I am colorblind. <laughs> Thank you, Miranda. Thank you for reminding me. <laughs> and zooming so near to my face that everyone can see my crusty cheeks. <laughs> I wonder mm -hmm. if it would go onto my hand. Probably not. Yes, yeah, it rejects my hand. Let let him let's let him be. Any beetles, the beetles are fascinating. The majority of and then uh, suck out trees and plants, while uh, the, the other majority, wait, that makes no sense, um, while many others uh, eat just waste products of the forest, of the savanna. The most famous one is probably the dung beetle who does it, because it literally eats the dung of other large animals. The dung beetle is fascinating because it's uh, was like not really worship, but it was a sacred animal among the ancient Egyptians because they saw a certain symbolism in how the dung beetle rolled these balls of uh, shit across the, the desert and the savannah because they thought that uh, so the sun god moved the sun in a very similar way across the horizon. So the dung beetle was kind of symbolic for the, the rising and subsiding sun and was therefore like a symbol of rebirth and that's why you see sky wraps and similar beetles all over uh, ancient Egyptian tombs. Yeah, I'm recording it. Well, I just found a fascinating stick. It looks a bit like a machine gun with uh, a lot of imagination. <laughs> well, that, that's how but, but yeah, as a child I would have said the same thing, that's the thing, because I'm still a child, at mind, unfortunately. At least you're aware of it. Yeah, <laughs> thank you, Miranda, thank you. Uh, <laughs> what I want to say, yeah, like, um, imagination is a great thing, and regarding sticks, there was like a survey a couple of years ago, which found out that the stick was the favorite toy of children. Uh, or not like the favorite toy, but like on on the list of favorite toys on like uh, rank number five or something like which I mean like it's the when you really think about it the the stick is like the universal toy and tool of humanity since probably the time before we were human because you know like even um, chimpanzees little chimpanzee children they will have a certain stick that they carry around with them and care for in a similar way to how human children would care for a doll which is an interesting form of um, play behavior but also might be how chimpanzee 
girls uh, trained to be mothers in the future, which is similar to how uh, girls of humans, uh, little girls, um, are often given like baby dolls and uh, similar toys to practice how to be a mother. If that's a good or a bad thing in our modern society, I'll lift it up to you. And <laughs> Just close the topic, like say something. Yeah. And with that being said, something, I don't know. Let's go on. <laughs> nice. I found another stick and <laughs> there is literally like nothing special about it except for the fact that the shape kind of reminds me of a femur, the, what we call a thigh bone. Yeah. A timur. <laughs> yes. I think in most animals the femur is like the largest or the most robust bone and it's one that gets uh, fossilized the most often. Not, well, I'm, or like at least very often. I, I say a lot of shit without actually doing my research, I, you have noticed that. And yeah, you can lo learn a lot about a, a femur, like a dinosaur femur for example. Uh, there are for example a new method uh, with which you can estimate the entire weight of the animal just by measuring the circumference of the femur bone. Because there is, of course, a direct correlation between how heavy an animal is and how strong the leg bones must be to carry the animal. Let's walk. Let's yes. walk. I'm recording still, huh? And, uh, regarding dinosaurs, we're in a forest that looks a bit quite primitive, I would say. But the thing is that forests here in dinosaur type Ginkgos, uh, conif uh, not conifers, uh, ferns, cycads, and all these other plant types you today probably call primitive. Like the ginkgo is literally a living fossil. It, today it only lives in some parts of China. That's the fascinating thing. In Europe, the ginkgo was known from fossils first until the Portuguese ventured to China, someone in the 16th, 17th century. And uh, then they where they found this plant again, and of course that was quite surprising. It's uh, comparable to how the coelacanth, the, this uh, ancient fish, was found off the coast of South Africa after it was already known from fossils and people thought it was um, already extinct since dinosaur times. Um, and there were no flowers, right? Flowers? Um, that is the thing that it's actually... Originally it was thought that flowers first appeared in the late... Someone in the middle to make the Cretaceous. Uh, like the late, uh, living non avian dinosaurs would have uh, seen the first flowers bloom. A dinosaur? Oh, yeah, an avian dinosaur right there. Avian bird. Oh, I couldn't get it on camera anyway. And, um, but uh, the state of like when the first flowering plants first appeared has been push back further and further the more fancy found. I believe general consensus is that the first ones, first flowering plants may have already begun appearing in the Jurassic, though they would have been very rare, but fossil pollen, uh, fossilized pollen uh, has uh, also brought in evidence that the flowering plants may have originated as far back as the Permian, which was a time before the dinosaurs even. But obviously uh, flowering plants were, even if flowering plants appeared uh, this far back in time, they would have still been quite um, rare until Cretaceous time. So conifer plants were still the most uh, dominant plant type. Should I start recording? Uh, 
Bonnie prawns are dominant anymore, and diamond toads aren't that dominant anymore, uh, except for birds. Now we have mammals slash fellows down there. Yeah. What we have here is a signpost that fell down. And I don't know how that happened. I don't even know where it originally sat because I can't see uh, the place where it would have stuck into the earth. But it's in, so I don't know how. So I guess it's been lying here for quite a long time. But I don't know what. And we can only guess what uh, fell it. Probably strong winds. There are sometimes strong storms around here that knock over stuff. Yeah. And if you look at the signs, can you can you see it from there? Mm, yeah. Yes, you can see here. Uh, if we assume that this fell like in this direction, then that direction would be Ötvil under Limat. And here you would go to Altberg, and there would be Würenlos or somewhere. Now I have an interesting thought, because you see there is already another signpost. Which makes me think that this thing there was maybe not knocked over, but was simply replaced and someone forgot to pick it up again. Hmm. Let's explore the pond. I'm gonna push you in, honey. It is indeed a pond. And a pond? Stream, which is indeed the... Now, I will do something very dangerous. I will um, pluck down this stick into the river like this to attract the very rare and elusive Swiss crocodile. The Swiss crocodile, many people believe it is extinct since the Eocene epoch. Ah, yeah. Who knows what? Wow, who would have guessed? <laughs> According to my, what I want to say, according to my newest research, the Swiss crocodile is still alive and well in ponds like this. As you can see here, it already caught its latest play, uh, prey, a dinner table. <laughs> the dinner, as you can see, the dinner is gone. This is proof it was eaten by the Swiss crocodile. The Swiss crocodile is said to be about 12 meters long which is quite large and <gasps> oh my god forget what i said about the Swiss crocodile there is a duck family oh my god ah, duck. Cute. i of course don't want to disturb this duck family but we can <gasps> probably go closer how about you count them like like count count honey i count the <laughs> Yes, like count them. Oh, but you. I actually never watched Sesame Street. That's the funny thing. <laughs> Though I did write a book about Sesame Street memes. This is not a joke. For one time, this is not a joke. I actually did that. You can <laughs> and your memes actually went pretty much viral because they have been translated to Spanish, and I've seen them shared in many different platforms. My memes. Yes, in birds, Spanish. In memes. Spanish, These translated. Oh, I look at that one! Ah, it's yeah. so small! Cute! I just wish we could zoom in more, but look, count them, honey! There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine babies! <laughs> it's so cute! And now what? Now what, honey? Give me something interesting you, to record. As you can see by the coloration, is this still recording? Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> as you can see by the coloration, I do not believe these are actually ducks, but rather this is the juvenile stage of the Swiss crocodile. That means the adult must be very close, and they, since they are very protective of their children, we are in grave danger and should probably leave. <laughs> okay. As you can see here, um, these are the animals which are 
the wild animals which are still uh, living in Switzerland, there used to be of course a lot more in the past, there used to be bears, wolves and even vultures in the Alps. And some of those examples are just used to have, uh, are being rewilded and have basically come back from extinction, at least in Switzerland. Like? While others are more um, controversial topic because of course there's still a lot of farmers in Switzerland and they don't want, therefore don't want wolves uh, living close to their uh, cattle and killing their sheep and stuff. <coughs> peeps. Which... Honey peeps. What? Peeps. What? People. I know. Never mind. Uh, should I continue? I'm still recording. No, I'm huh. recording. Honey? I am recording. Say something, hon. What? I am recording. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, when I was young, I would always come to ponds like this and search for tadpoles and then try to raise them until they were frogs. Uh, because I was quite bad at finding tadpoles, of course, that never happened. Uh, yes. Yes. What I then did is just dig up stuff because I don't know, I'm, I am very easily bored and I do a lot, a lot of dumb stuff. <laughs> Honey, please. Oh, here. Are you still recording? Uh, here, uh, you see actually quite beautifully the tree, the rings of this tree. I'm not sure if this is the coloration that, like this disconnect in the dark color, is like natural. That's because this is. Yeah, I think this is it's because this part here is wet and this one is not. So this is like this, the, and it therefore has a higher contrast. I don't know why it is wet here. The tree obviously can't uh, suck out water out of the ground anymore. But yeah, this maybe someone leaked it. Who would have licked it? Like who I know, I would she, have. Who has a tongue large enough to lick this? A horse, a cow. With one lick or multiple licks? <laughs> well, honey, how am I supposed to know? Maybe it was the jetty. Maybe it was a blue whale. A blue whale has a tongue that is uh, as heavy as an African elephant. So wouldn't the tongue be bigger than the tree itself? Maybe it was a young blue whale. So you? With legs. So maybe it was you. <laughs> Stop the recording, I'm still a bit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, here uh, we found a really old log, like it's so old and being um, torn apart. Look that I can just like push my stick in there, like it's a sponge, because uh, there's a lot of bacteria and fungi that are eating away at the wood. The uh, isopod, but, though. Yeah, but uh, I want to get to that. <laughs> what is really fascinating, though, is this creature we found here, which is an isopod. Some people also call it a roly-poly. Why? Because when you touch them, uh, they um, curl together into a ball and you can basically like push them around like a ball, but they probably don't like that. But what is really fascinating about roly-polies is that they are not insects. You would think they are insects because obviously they are they don't have eight legs like a spider and they have uh, no they have an exoskeleton and multiple legs but as you can see it has more legs than uh, your average insect and is in fact um, the isopod is in fact a uh, crustacean yeah i knew that <laughs> then why am i telling this bullshit <laughs> honey i have a test about that in two weeks i swear oh why didn't you tell me? I could have helped you. 
You, because we what? haven't gotten that far yet into well, my look, study. Look how far I can push this stick into the lock. Oh, well, that's suggestive. You said that, I didn't. <laughs> I wonder if I can pick up... The, it, this roly poly is like... doesn't seem scared of us. Okay, a bit. Can, can you zoom close enough to see the eyes? I think it, I they think could. eye supports have like really cute eyes. Like you? Thank you. Yeah, it is. It's. No, it's not. I don't think it can. I, know, I got it, I got it. No, it's not. There. If only I could. Um, no. No, honey, it, like, it's literally showing me its ass. How am I supposed to record the eyes? There is another one. Where? Oh, the one is bigger and bigger. Oh yeah, baby. <laughs> but honey, I need your commentary, otherwise I'm just... <laughs> well, anyway. Oh, what happened? Are you uh, yeah, but the image is weird. I'll stop, um, I don't know, the contrast, the light. It's really bright, I'll use the stuff. Now I am. Yeah. I'm recording. Uh, here we see a tree that's been clearly very freshly cut because you can see, really see the resin oozing out. Now what is resin? Resin is basically um, a bit similar to our blood. So it uh, mainly serves the function of like like when a tree gets hurt, that it closes the wound. So similar to how our blood clots around a wound. Um, you can actually use that to make paint. You know, I work at a paint company. Yes, so we use resin. Um, of course, they are mostly not natural nowadays. But back then, when synthesis was yeah synthesis synthesis wasn't a thing, we would use or humans would use natural stuff like resin or blood to make durable paintings, uh, uh, like paints, yeah, paints for paintings, like, uh, huh? In whose blood did they use? Uh, animal blood, you know, oh, okay. cave painting. I thought, I thought like cave painting was a mixture of blood and pigment. Didn't you know that? Blood no way. <laughs> no way. I thought it was just like berry juice and shit. No, I mean, they could also use that, but shit, what? I would use shit. <laughs> If I had nothing else Excuse me. For, to paint a mammoth, I mean, it's the right color, brown. But honey, like, you know, there were different color paints. I know. Yeah, I know. Um, yeah, so, um, what, I want, what I wanted to say is... Uh, resin, of course, is like also used in Jewelry as amber, amber is fossilized tree resin, like it's resin that is so old that it hardened to basically a uh, rock. And also many people who watch Jurassic Park know sometimes little insects got caught in resin and the resin hardened and fossilized and that's how we got mosquitoes and other insects in amber. Now of course uh, many people think that the method of resurrecting dinosaurs that we see in Jurassic Park is possible and it was actually thought to be possible in the 80s and 90s when some scientists claimed that they were able to extract DNA from 40 million year old resin that um, contained a bee inside it. But the thing is, no study done after the 90s was able to make the same results. So many people now think that those original studies in which uh, DNA was found in fossil amber were um, false positives. They, they were contaminated by probably like a human material, like a, a, some scientist's hair maybe fell into a the A woman is coming, honey. A woman is coming. Sticky, that's no, yeah. Honey. No, like, you, uh, let me do it then. Okay. Wait, hold on. Did you manage? 
So in case anyone is interested, this is what resin looks like. If I can focus it. Where is it on your stick? Ah. Here. Sorry. Okay, like you can really tell that well with this, but uh, resin is usually transparent and sticky, very sticky. Um, this one, as you can see, is yellowish. Um, it can also be completely transparent, Can like closer, yeah? mm -hmm. like this one. This yeah, one is a good example. This one yeah, looks more fresh. Here it is transparent. Here it is brown. Yeah, I think like you know some resins. That's what I've learned. Some resins yellow, like get a yellow tint with time because of the sun. The sun, the the sunlight makes them yellow because of the radicals. Um, in the sunlight and the reaction that happens, which is, I think, oxidation. I'm not really sure, but if anyone is interested, this is what resin looks like. Uh, and yeah, we go back um, to you. Yeah, there is also a fascinating thing about resin, which it was actually very important for like ancient humans because. Uh, Correct me if I'm wrong, but resin contains uh, turpentine, which is like a natural like fuel source. Basically, what cavemen did was when the when the air was very damp or it was raining, but they needed fire, they would put their sticks and their firewood into like tree stumps and coat them in resin and then light them on fire, and they would be able to burn even in rain. Because oh, it was okay. such a powerful fire fuel. So, so yeah, and also they could also use it to, to make paint, I said before. Yeah, like there, there were many, as you can see, there were many uses for resin. You could, like, if it's amber, you can use it for jewelry or making um, cool 90s movies, or you could use it as paint <laughs> for stuff or to light fire and. Uh, Destroy the woods that provided you with the resin. That's the ironic thing, huh? Apropos woods, let's go deeper. <laughs> oh god, are you okay? <laughs> are you recording? Yes. <laughs> uh, we are close to the end of our journey, you see the, back there maybe the, our houses again, we are back to civilization, it's been 84 years, I can't... You wait. haven't even watched the Titanic. I have, I, yeah of course I haven't watched the, the movie, I already know the ending, the ship fucking sinks. Did you know the Titanic had two sister ships, which were constructed in exactly the same way, and I think one of them also sank. And the other one? I think it sank too, I'm not sure. <laughs> but basically, unsink basically unsinkable ship my ass. The funny thing is there was actually a person who was both on the Titanic and its sister ship, the Britannic, and survived both sinkings. A woman, no? I think it was a woman. A, a nurse, woman. wasn't she a nurse? Ma yeah, I think. I Do you know her name? No. No, but I Are heard about it. You will never know, honey. I'm older than you think, because I'm a witch. Are you 13? <laughs> what? <laughs> but uh, anyway, uh, why were we talking about the Titanic? Ah, yes, because our the because the niveau of this documentary is deeper than the Titanic. Well. <laughs> and basically, I want to end our journey at this weird tree with like one arrow facing this way and the other that way and I have no idea what this means it is probably like a sign for loggers I'm I'm kind of a logger I'm a blogger logger is in blogger <laughs> what there is a bumblebee there hey oh Th that's pretty good cute where is it I so can't basically oh, it? I, I started this journey with the assumption that uh, Instead of becoming the next David Attenborough, this would evol devolve into something akin to the Filthy Frank show. I don't think that happened, because the, the Filthy Frank show actually had uh, some planning behind it. And some uh, artistic talent by George Miller. Uh, 
all this has is like my pure unadulterated autism. I don't know if I have autism. My girlfriend thinks. I'm pretty sure you do. That I've never been to a doctor about this. Maybe I do. I don't know. I don't really care at this point anymore. I don't know. Yeah, of course, because it's not dinosaurs you're talking about. You <laughs> that just goes to show <laughs> your autism traits, you know? I'm leaving you behind now. Okay, I have to. I, put can, it. I think I can dismatch this rock for humanity. Please stop, you